Well, blessed Monday to you as we come to you with your daily encouragement. And our um, study today comes from uh, page 54 and 55 of Life Together, The Day Together. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer writes, We must learn to know the scriptures again as the Reformers and the Fathers knew them. We must not grudge the, the time and the work that it takes. We must know that scriptures first and foremost are for the sake of our salvation. But besides this, there is ample reasons that makes this requirement exceedingly urgent. How, for example, shall we ever attain certainty and confidence in our personal and church activity if we do not stand on solid biblical ground? It is not our heart that determines our course, but God's word. But who in this day has any proper understanding of the need of scriptural proof? How often we hear innumerable arguments from life and from experience put forward as the basis for most crucial decisions. But the argument of scripture is missing. And this authority would perhaps point in exactly the opposite direction. It is not surprising, of course, that the person who attempts to cast discredit upon their wisdom should be the one who himself does not seriously read, know, and study Scripture. But one who will not learn and handle the Bible for himself is not an evangelical Christian. This, I think, is so important. We are moving into a realm that people are calling post-truth. In other words, it's not about the proofs anymore as much as it is about the story. Some called it, and this was starting to happen when I was in seminary, they called it the Oprah effect. And what did they mean by that? They meant from Oprah Winfrey about the compelling stories that she would have on her shows and that they would influence people. Right now, we are seeing that entering into all aspects of our world, including dividing us. Some are saying that, that what we are seeing are different narratives pulling out in the political realm and sometimes being at war with each other. And it's not based on fact sometimes as much as it's based on persuasion and feelings and the likes that we either resonate with a certain candidate and not, maybe more even the opposition, we don't resonate with a certain candidate. Whether we like it or not, we have in many ways moved away from what I would call a fact-oriented society into a story-oriented society. And what I would say is that if we have, and I think that we have moved into that realm, we have to ask which story is most important. And there are many people that I found that claim to be Christians that have some fanciful stories about predictions, about events that have taken place or will take place. Even some making grand predictions about things that in our political climate. I mean, in some ways, it's either fascinating or sad to see all these stories that people are, quote-unquote, being duped for. And the question I always ask the Lord is, what? okay, so what story do you want me to, to focus on? And the Lord said, what other story is there? This God's story. It's the story of Jesus' death and resurrection. Now, I have been told by some that, well, we've heard that before. Yeah, you have. But every other story needs to be connected to that story. Because that's the core, that's the center, that's the life, that is the center of Scripture. We have to remember that the Bible, even before we try to prove, whether it be Bible prophecy about how the end times are going to come together, or even about the creation of the world, we have some very fascinating people having some arguments about whether it's creation-oriented as they try to have a school of thought at the Ark experience down in uh, uh, Kentucky. Or others who are saying that they're combining regular science or what they consider regular science with the Bible and are holding to be evolutionists and believers at the same time. That's an interesting debate, by the way. And it's an interesting debate about Bible prophecy. It's an interesting debate about politics and all these others which we listen to or which we shouldn't listen to. 
But you know what we're missing as we go to those interesting side stories? Some are biblically based. Some are kind of of our own creation. I always worry about the Bible that has more footnotes than Scripture itself. There are a few of those out there. Just to warn you, just because it's in the Bible or in the page doesn't mean that it is in Scripture we need to worry about the basic story, the story of Jesus' death and resurrection, the story that has been the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, one of the interesting things that we like to highlight is that Luke tells it a little differently than Mark, and Mark tells it a little differently than Matthew, and all three of them, while similar, also tell it very differently from the way John does. But one thing that they keep the same is the core story. That story is the same, no, regardless of your point of view. And that's the reason why, is because we open the Bible not to just prove our point. We open the Bible not just to prove our theory about things. We open the Bible to hear the story of Jesus and to enter into his story. And his is part of the larger story of the people of Israel who were both um, set free from bondage and set free to be the people of God. And so when we start to stray from that story is when we start getting into some interesting side notes, some things that are not of primary importance. And that's why we are called in this life together to focus on that story, to make sure that our students, our Sunday school, confirmation, vacation Bible school students know that story. Because it's the story of love, it's the core story. Now, we might get into our particularities, uh, either with politics, uh, Bible prophecy, um, creation, evolution, all these other ones that are that are interesting, even politics at times. But if we are truly a church, those won't be the ones that take up our time. In fact, here's an interesting symbolism. While we still have an American flag, and some will even um, parallel it with an American church flag, which is supposed to be the honoring of both America and the church in America, they are typically, and should be, not at the center of our worship space. At our churches, they're either at the entrance to the worship space on either side of the door, or they're on either side uh, in the sanctuary, but they are not the focal point. Do we not love America? Absolutely, we love America. Do we not love the church in America? No, we love the church, and we has a specific story for us. But they are secondary. They are secondary. Let me repeat again. They are secondary to the story that is explained at the center. And even my story as a preacher in our church, the pulpit is not in the center. It's on the side. And the reason for that is because we point to the main story. I am not the main story. My interaction with the scripture and my message, whether good or inspiring, is not the main story. Jesus is the main story. And while we have organs sometimes with the beautiful pipes, that's also off to the side, sometimes even in the back. Oh my goodness, don't we like organs? No, we do, but we want to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the main story. And so that is, I think, the reflection that he really is honing in on. What's your main story when it comes to Scripture? Is it Jesus' life, death, and resurrection? Is it his connection to the people of God who are rescued from Egypt? Is it the story of salvation? Or are we caught in cul-de-sacs, little places that maybe take us in interesting directions, but not to the core of what we are called to believe? Take care. God bless. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.